Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. He is part of our podcast community. He also has his own podcast on our channel. His name is Eric Ebron, and he is a consultant when it, in leadership, and he is amazing. And today, he wanted to touch base and talk about a topic about how to be a great leader, what the past hold, held, what the present is and what the future holds and things that we could do to bring our leadership qualities up to par and make us terrific leaders now and in the future. So Eric, it's a pleasure to have you back on the show. I really love having you. I enjoy our talks. You are an amazing consultant and an amazing example of leadership. And I'm just so glad to have you on the show. Now, tell everybody a, briefly a little about yourself and let's talk about, you know, being a good leader, what it takes. And, you know, let's get into all this because it's very uh, interesting, the topic that you chose to speak about today. Excellent, Stacey. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Thank you uh, for, for, again, uh, your time. And this is very important to me and the opportunity to speak to your audience in this fashion. And and again, I think to to help, you know, not just not just humanize, but but to take these these larger, magnanimous you know uh, topics and put them down to something that we could we can kind of relate to and bounce ideas off of, and and then grow. So uh, I'm Eric E. Brown, leadership consultant. Uh, I was in the uh, aerospace industry as a director for a while. Uh, took an early out and an opportunity to kind of put what what's been here like down on, on paper, right? And mm -hmm. have an opportunity to share. You know, I mentioned to my wife some, some time ago, I said, I said, honey, this is, this is what I like to do, right? I, I, I grow leaders, I build dynamic teams, you know, and I've done this for the aerospace industry. So now I'm taking it and having this opportunity to, to network and, and do that on one-on-one -on -one and in any group settings is really exciting for me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we talk about marrying your passion Right with with your work, so to speak, yeah. and then building something that grows, and and so that's that's kind of where I am now. You know, for for this um, uh, podcast episode, it's 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 really I think talking about where we came from or what leadership looked like, you know, twenty years ago or ten years ago, yeah. and what that has changed to today, and then yes, I think by the end, what we're going to to do is have these reflection moments of, hey, you know, where is it going, right? And right. and can we help support what where it's going looks like? So, yeah. you know, when I was a kid, uh, you know, played with Hot Wheel cars, you know, that kind of thing. It was me and my brother, and they come in small sizes, and you have the track, and then a lot of times, little boys are just, you know, very creative. You don't have the track half the time, and you're just pushing a car very fast in a direction. Yes. And then what you end up doing when you say let's race is, you know, you, you, you have one and your, you know, your, your brother, your friend has one. And as you push it, you, you're sending it off at a certain speed and a certain trajectory, not knowing which direction is going to go. And you know what? Not even caring because yeah. you're just watching it. You're enjoying that moment. And I think as, as leaders, we do that with our careers. Sometimes yeah. we spend this time, we, we build this knowledge, we get our degrees, we get our certifications, we have these fellow leaders around us, and, and we're, we're off. And our hope is either we, we're going to win, mm -hmm. we're going to reach our goal, but we, we don't know where we're going to diverge. And, and that's, what, that's what we're looking at. So, so right now, I kind of want to talk about, uh, I have a little story and see, see what you, you think about this. Uh, it was about 20 years ago, and and uh, the owner of the company, small company we had, I was operations manager. He was hiring a, a, a new president, this this young upstart, this hotshot guy. And uh, uh, he came in, and he had these ideas, which I think is great. And um, we we come to find out his his leadership style was was grading. It it, mm -hmm. it just rubbed kind of people the wrong way. He he did get some results. But you know, right. it was just very rough. Uh, and and I remember having a conversation with him once. And I said to him, because I, I at this time, I, I was in the Marine Corps for 10 years. And, mm -hmm. and now I'm in a civilian world. And, and he would he would bang his hand on the desk. And he would look at me. And, would, and, and it took a lot to not, not laugh. And yeah. it wasn't laugh to be disrespectful. Right. But what he was trying to emulate was something that was 
passe. It was it was old. And yeah. it reminded me of the movie um Wall Street, right? Okay, With, and, yeah. and and in Wall Street, right? They, they that was an 80s based, you know, uh, uh and, and Charlie Sheen was the young upstart and they're yelling at him. Yeah. And they're showing and mimicking what leadership looks like. Mm -hmm. And and to me, when I saw him act this way, that's what it reminded me of. Like, like, hey, you're 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 too young to be living in this old, old fantasy world of leadership. Yeah. And today I, I kind of wonder that. I wonder, do we have leaders now that are struggling because where they are and where they came from yeah. doesn't, doesn't quite work. Do, do you have an example? Do you have a memory of, let's say when, when, when you were you know, in the corporate world coming through a, a leader that was holding on to some past style that doesn't seem to be working and getting frustrating? I remember when I was working in this newspaper and the woman who was the senior editor, um, her it, it, her position was given to her by somebody as a friend, a friend who passed, gave her the opportunity. So she felt um, this sense of power and she had to uh, exemplify her her power through being harsh with the employees. And instead of instead of working with the writers and working with the whole team and department, she had to put on this this person of I am a senior editor. I am in control, you know. And she and she wasn't very nice. You know, she wasn't a mentor. She wasn't someone that you looked up to. She was more the person that you cringed when she, when they walked into the office, and that disrupted the the whole um, the whole unit, you know, so to speak. But you know, she got this in her head because she saw, you know, the the word in her head. It was a powerful position because she had control. So she had to demonstrate her control by behaving this way but it didn't work you know people were looking for a, a mentor someone they can connect with like myself and it got to the point where I was so frustrated I just decided to leave because mm -hmm. I just didn't want to be in that environment and I think people you know either they 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 want to feel important or they see the way maybe the past people and their positions worked and they think that's the way it's supposed to be. Or maybe they even look on TV and they they see the way, you know, in TV, what the, you know, what the actors are are trying to mimic, you know, and they think right. that's the way I should be instead of just being themselves and and being warm and and being a mentor. You know, I, I like how you, you mentioned just the word warm. So so back in the day, there was more of this, you know, command and control type yeah. of, of leadership that mm -hmm. and and again, that's that was normal. So so. Yeah. So I, I don't want to ostracize them, and I'm not saying you're doing that, but I don't want to ostracize them for growing in what they they thought leaders do, right? Yeah. And, and if if their fathers or mothers were that type of excellent leader, and and it worked, you know, in the banking industry, it just doesn't work here, and they're either in a in a state of growth that they're not they're not ready for the position, right? Because yeah. that style doesn't work, or should I say industry? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I would change this a little bit here that in today's time, we have to be more collaborative. Yeah. And, and, and I've, I've had to work hard to be more collaborative yeah. you know, coming from a, a Marine Corps background where that's not the case yeah. to, to one that I really want to hear what my, you know, a uh, uh, managerial team that worked for me, what they think and where they're going in, in these innovative ideas. Yeah. There, there is this age difference between them and, and myself and, and it it's crazy for me to think I have just the answers. Yeah. Uh, concerning at one point in time, what got me here is not the thing that's going to to keep us. Right. right? We have to be more more collaborative, and and that's something that one leader didn't didn't have. We were in a small um, company, but he he didn't have that. He he felt this pressure to come up with all the answers, even yeah. though he didn't know the industry. Right. So I think that that's the challenging time. You know, um, one thing that I want to reflect is is how this generation is looking at the current leaders and mm -hmm. saying what needs to change. Yeah. So so that that are that's something that leaders today should should be asking those questions. And and you know, I'll be honest, I I need to do more of that myself. Right. Um that now that I have the ability to not not be a cog in the wheel. Yeah. Uh, but I I have <laughs> I can reach out to you know, leaders of a certain realm, roughly between 30 and 40 and say, 
right. hey, what, 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 not just what interests you, what's missing? Yeah. What do we, what do we have it wrong? Mm -hmm. Where are you going? Right. What, what does your team see, say we need to do that people of, of a certain generation are not listening for? Yeah. Man, thank you. Thank you for that. Cause I'm, I'm going to, that, that's the next survey I need to put out there to, <laughs> to, to my group. So, so we can, we can grow that aspect, right? It's, yeah. It, you know, it, I, I'm, I'm missing that, you know, I can still guide you, but I'm, I'm missing that, that piece to the next SP. So that's very important. Thank you. And I love the term you used warm because I, again, that's, th that's a good segue into the next one here, which is back in the day, how smart you were, right? your IQ, mm -hmm. not just education, but your IQ was very important to companies and leadership of where we're going, right? You, you right. spent a significant time in showing how smart you are, not in an arrogant way, mm -hmm. but it is expected for you. Right. And then there's been this transition over the last 10 years, a little more than that, but 10 years on EQ, right? Emotional yeah. intelligence and what that looks like. Right. For some of us um, who are a bit compassionate by nature, a mm -hmm. bit sensitive by nature, yeah. a bit caring by nature, right. we had the leg up yes. in that transition. Yes. Um, have you found instances where EQ was very important? And then how about this? I'm going to challenge you. Have you found instances where EQ, even in today's time, was, was it's still important, but not as important to the task at hand? I think when it came to emotional challenges, the first thing I, I think about is when I, I was um, writing for uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul. And the first thing that comes to my mind is that I, I wrote a story and the senior um, editor was really interested in publishing the story, but she gave it back to me. She said, do a better job. And then, so I looked at it, rewrote it, gave it back to her. It's like, not good enough. Do it again. And this must have went on like seven times. And, you know, and at the end, she's like, she said, okay. She goes, I'm going to do a few things and show you what I mean. And she, she fixed it up a little bit. And then she sent it back for me. And she says, what did I do that was different? Mm. And she made me look and, and I, I learned from that. I was getting frustrated. Trust me. I was get, I was like, why is she doing this to me? And mm. But she made me learn the importance of certain writing skills that are necessary in order to make a, a very good piece when it, when, and to really grasp the emotions of, of the readers. And something that I, I, at that point, I was lacking, told a great story, but there were certain things that I needed to do to draw the readers in. And, and, and I, and at the end, when I asked her why you, you, you know, why you made me do this so many times, she goes, because I know you're better than that. And, you know, so that, that, you know, always stuck with me and it made me every time I did something afterwards to really think about what she made me do, how could I do it better? And it made me a better writer to be honest with you. That's a, that's an, that's an excellent example of a, of a leader leaning not so much right on on the intelligence portion of just saying hey find me someone who can just do it right who already has it yeah versus saying hey i have an opportunity to, to to be a little more compassionate to kind of listen and to teach it in such a way that you felt you're 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 bridging the gap of where you are and what she needs you to be in these incremental moments so that's 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 excellent yeah i have a i have a piece where um how I knew that for me, I'm a little more caring than, mm -hmm. than uh, and uh, th there was a person I was training and, you know, he was getting there, you know, and sometimes it's not, it's not easy to, to, to come into a job without a certain measure of training yeah. and the expectation from that job in the aerospace is, hey, look, you got three weeks to, to get this, right? <laughs> I need you productive in three weeks, right? This is what we do, right? Yeah. We need shareholder value quick. Right. And, I was probably at the five week mark and, and, and they're, they're almost there. They're almost where I think not just getting them ready to do the task, but to be able to contribute to going more than the task, yeah. which is, that's who I am. Right. And so I was talking to the, uh, the site leader and the site leader says to me, uh, so are, are they ready? You know, it's, it's been, and I said, they're almost ready. They're, they're this. And he says, well, can they do the job or not do the job? And I said, 
I said, they can, but, but a lot of people's skills aren't so myopic that this is what we're looking for. So yeah. it's really, I like to look at what else they can contribute, how far, and, and if this isn't it, they have these other skills that we can utilize and put them to, and they're going to be right. expert. I said, that's the school that I come from. Yeah. And uh, the leader sat back and he looked, he says, yeah, I didn't go to that school. <laughs> I need them ready for, and it was a, it was a moment when we talk about EQ, he probably didn't, didn't have the best of emotional uh, intelligence. Yeah. He was a great mentor in how to get certain things done and how to get your team there. But yeah. having that EQ wasn't, wasn't quite there in that leader. So again, you, you don't just throw the baby away with the bathwater, right? He, yeah. he was a great mentor in these factors. These other things wasn't the case. Yeah. But that's when I realized, at, by the way, I ended up being his replacement later as, as a leader. So I was able to bring in the best of him in getting tasks done and setting expectations and setting goals for people yeah. while yet bringing in a measure of EQ that not just he didn't have, but yeah. I think the people were looking for. So there was a, there was a, there was a, point where this is what was expected of the team yeah. in the business now this is what's expected and as a leader where are you on that scale so right. i think that's that's something that again 10 15 years ago wasn't there it is now there and as a consultant my job is to kind of help help them see yeah. you know so I'm, I'm looking for clients that are saying hey listen i'm i'm feeling ambivalent about these these whiny people i'm yeah. i'm feeling ambivalent about i have to care you know how do i do that and, th and that's what consultants do is i yeah. think they help bridge that gap and say listen don't look at it as whiny look at it as as, as you know the zeitgeist and societal changes that have occurred you can either change with them yeah grow and teach them yeah or you can say stop this train i went off mm -hmm. All right so i think so that's one you know i think one of the one of the last changes I kind of kind of want to talk about is is in the back back in the day we were really looking at from the business perspective we, we want to grow shareholder value right we want to talk about dividends right those expectations companies say we're expecting a two percent growth or you know our earnings per share would go you know we're setting four dollars and 68 cents right and some of that was based on stable economy mm -hmm. right a really, really, I mean, we talk about the Microsofts, we talk about the the IBMs, of course, it was going 40 years ago, yeah. but we talk about the GEs, we talk about these large conglomerates that have these nice, small, incremental changes yeah. in growth. Stability was, was, the, was the key. Mm -hmm. And then over the last 20 years, 15 years, everything is agile, right? Everything is fluid. <laughs> Every, everything is... is I remember when the term volatile was was a bad thing. Yeah. And now we live in a volatile, uncertain, almost economy quarter to quarter. And, and we have to adjust. As leaders, you have to adjust and say, hey, I can manage and lead in this uncertain world, which yeah. you would never have said that 20 years ago, 15 right. years ago. You would have never said and admit that there's uncertainty in your business. Yeah. And now here we are, we, we, we have to live with that. Yeah. So I, I think, again, as, as a consultant, you have to teach and say, listen, what are you used to? Yeah. And some leaders say, man, I'm used to getting you from point A to point B in the most efficient way possible. Yeah. But I sit in front of my boss and my boss wants to get me from point A to point H. Yeah. Like, completely skipping that there are like six or seven letters in between there. And, and he's wondering what H looks like. Right. And so as a consultant, I'm saying, okay, let's, let's talk, Let, let's, let's look at and have these conversations on either a what's holding you back from right. seeing because, because some leaders are not even creative enough to see H yeah. I can see, see Stacy. I've had leaders that I go, listen, um, I, I need some great ideas. Tuesday, we're going to have a brainstorming session. We're going to come in and we're going to find out how we're going to get 12% increase in output productivity for next quarter. Right. And then uh, we have the meeting and someone will say, here are the changes I, I suggest. And I go, what you just suggested is like, like normal. Like, yeah. And they would go, well, yes. I go, no, 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 you don't get it. 
what you suggested as some epiphanous idea is what I normally expect you to even do. Yeah. Like, right. I mean, that's you, you just came in here with and your best idea was the day to day. Right. And and they were sitting there. And I go, okay, we're, we're going to have to have some additional talks, not in a bad way. Yeah. But just to, just to let you see where you are. Like you, you might be one of those leaders that just handles the day to day really, really well. Yeah. Which means I'm going to need you to look inside your team. Right. And find me that one or two outliers that you probably chastise because they're, <laughs> they, they are too creative. Right. Like they, they they come up with an idea that you like, that's crazy. And that's because you don't see where H even is. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's that's a different. So I, I'll I'll give you an example. Um I, <laughs> I had this, I had this one person that worked for me, and they they were so creative, but they were they were too creative. Now, now I feel bad now because I've now grown, but there was a time that I said, guys, we Give me a plan to get from A to B and then B to C and then C to D. I'm fine with that, yeah. right? I mean, Stacy, D was still like a 12% increase quarter over quarter. I mean, right. that's that's phenomenal. That and is I, phenomenal. I, I, I can live on that. We can we can grow. We, we're going to get our bonus. Yeah. This person was always saying, hey, Eric, we can get a 30% output. And I said, how are we going to get 30% output? And they would give me some outlandish idea yeah. and i would say listen i'm i don't want to poke holes in your ideas because i know <laughs> i know you really mean well but i need i need to slow you down just a little bit yeah yeah that that your your creativity is within a structure that works right so here's something i want to pose to you because i think what we as leaders sometimes don't do mm -hmm. is support the level of creative ideas that's being thrown out there Yes. with the base of what does work. Right. So so I want you to be creative. I want you to I want you to give me that 30%. But let me show you what 12% and 15 and 20% looks like. Let yes. me support this base to help you springboard into the next. So right. here's here's a thought for you. Have you had a moment where either your team members or maybe it was you that were you were so creative, right? That that you blew past other people and, and it took them time to catch up to you. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. I, I, I've done that many times because I, I am a very creative person. I see out of the box completely. And mm. so I would start to create things that I could see that would do very well, but they were not on the same pathway. They were they were more on the standardized. Let's do it this way, this way, and this way. And I'm thinking, wow, we can make an explosion if we do it this way, you know. And it was completely out of the box, and I knew it could work. And but they were inside the box, and yeah. and then I had people that kind of felt a little uh, intimidated, you know, by my creativity because they they weren't even they weren't even close to where I was at. Yeah. And so they, they were impressed, but at the same time, they were kind of intimidated mm -hmm. also. And, uh, you know, so then I, so I, then I had to figure out a way to make these approaches where I didn't, I didn't, um, intimidate them so much right. where I would, I would use like, you know what, I was in your spot and, and I was struggling, you know, because I was doing X, Y, and Z just like you, but that didn't get me where I really wanted to be. Instead, I took a chance and did, you know, this, this, and this, and that actually brought me to a better place. I said, I think that you could have the same effect if you try it. And then they would be like more, then they would start to Wow, she was in the same spot. I could relate to her. Now, you know, I don't feel so intimidated. I feel more on her level, you know, like I don't feel that there is a wall between us or I don't feel, you know, insecure because, she, you know, she's, you know, doing things differently and she's having this success, right. you know, and then they're more apt to want to say, okay, tell me, how did you do it? What should I do? And they were, then we had this communication going and we were both on the same level and there was no, there was no imbalance. You know, I, I what I gather, what I hear, which is something I, I'm I'm a part of, which is there is still the responsibility 
as the the shooting star, mm -hmm. right? To to turn around sometimes and say, well, okay, I, I need to find a way to, to to marry where I am and where they are and and then help either help them come up to where I am or not quite slow down, but just realize that that you know you you might be ahead of your time. So so this this is kind of what what I've heard. I've been in a couple of situations very similar. Here's a bad way. I've been in a situation that the idea and the project that I came up with was so far advanced mm -hmm. to what, what that it didn't work. Right. Right. Not because the project wasn't a good idea. I got the energy. I got the motivation. I had the right two members to help support it. Yeah. But it was it was like pulling. 90 other people along, <laughs> <laughs> right? You're, you're pulling, and it was week to week, month to month. I was pulling them to this really good idea. Yeah. Pulling to them to, to something that was, was a, it, it was a, a monumental shift in thinking yeah. and how the process works, which was, which is great. You're looking for that, but you were pulling. And th the way sometimes leaders can interpret that is that people are either in your way Mm -hmm. they are impeding you mm -hmm. right they're like these you know uh this slow poke you know man i can't wait for half these people go away so i can come up with these great ideas that's going to work yeah but but as a leader i think what was hard to figure out is when when you're shifting a team of stable solid workers mm -hmm. and you trying to be very nimble and agile and it's it, when um, when I was in the Marines and we were on a deployment and here I am on a certain ship that was nimble. Mm -hmm. right? And and then we would look at these, you know, aircraft carriers. So we were with a battle group. So there'd be an aircraft carrier. There'd be a destroyer. There'd be two subs. There'd be a refueler. And it's like a, like eight or nine ships total are part of this this battle group. And, you know, the captain would come across and say, hey, we're going to be doing some exercises and some maneuvers. And uh, we go, great. And of course, we're Marines, have nothing to do with it, but just watch. Yeah. And, and I'm watching these other ships be very, I mean, they're moving and, and doing this while the battleship, right? This, this, this aircraft carrier just kind of chug, chugged along, right? It, it, <laughs> it, it didn't move the way we were moving, but yeah. its job wasn't to move the way we were moving. Right. There were other people around that was, their job was to scout ahead, to move ahead, to move, to to kind of make sure that this whole space was safe to move. Where I'm going with that is as, as we, we move from the stability to this more agile workforce, yeah. right? There are supporting leaders that I think their job is to go out there and press the bubble. To yeah. push, right? To to be these ones that's coming up that with these ideas that don't seem possible. One leader wants to do thirty percent increase in productivity in one quarter. Guy, you know, <laughs> you're, you're, we want to say you're, you're doing too much. Yeah, right. Twelve percent is great. Fifteen percent is going to knock their socks off. Yeah. If you come up with thirty percent, we're going to have to do thirty percent every quarter which is going to be crazy, you know? Yeah, yeah. But you need that 30% leader so that when we come up with these great ideas, you pushed my 15% up to 20. Right. Which, which, which your 30% idea, which was completely not sustainable, which is, which is excellent though. <laughs> you push my 15% idea, which is, which is great to 20. And now we married up this great dynamic team. Yeah. Now you built a dynamic team that was more agile that the business needed yeah. and we all got our bonuses. Right. So I think as, as leaders today, you're either going to sometimes come against those really dynamic, really creative, really shooting star leaders like you were talking about here. Yeah. Who, although it's not their time, you, you can help bring them into the fold because you can have a a number of leaders that are just looking at this four to 5% yeah. growth, right? Right. They, yeah. they go, what do you mean? The economy is only a 3% growth. Why are we <laughs> trying to do? Yeah. You're, you're never going to be seen as an outstanding leader. 
you're never going to be seen as the leader that we need to take into the future. Yeah. If you're only looking at three to 5% growth. Right. Right. Somewhere along the way, for those leaders that are watching that, that are really stable, like, mm -hmm. you know, you might be at the tail end of your career anyway. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Marry up with those, those young hotshots, wherever they may be, because they're going to need you to turn some of those really wild, crazy ideas into what works. Yeah. And between the two, you're going to, you're going to find that 15, 20%, which by the way, no one expected you to do 20%. <laughs> no, no one expected 20%. So, yeah. so bring them along and let them see. And again, what I'm looking at still, this whole part is what was, yeah, what is, and where we're going. And I think right. where we're going is so exciting because, you know, we had a brief conversation about like, like AI and what that looks like. Um, brief conversation on the agileness and we, as we talked about this critical moment that it's a volatile industry, right? We talked mm -hmm. about, I come from aerospace yeah. and we see in the news, right? Certain large companies, Boeing's, these OEMs yeah. that they're in this shift that we really want to know what the next, as much as I want to say what next year looks like. Yeah. From the shareholders perspective, they want to know what next week looks like. Yes. Right. Well, what, what does next week look like? Which is, which we're talking about agile, we're talking about yeah. volatile circumstances. I'm looking on my news feed. It comes across day to day and I'm looking at these shifts and I'm going, I don't know how they're going to do this in, in Kansas. I don't know how they're going to 700 people on a furlough. 21 days, and I'm wondering what day 22 is going to look like. Yeah. Right. <laughs> 20 years ago, that wasn't even the case. Yeah. The world didn't know what the underpinnings of a large, you know, $600 billion industry. N nobody looked at that. Nobody yeah. from day to day. And so I think that's that's where we are. And and for today's leaders, you can either be on the on the side of saying, I'm the type of leader that maintains and keep us there. Mm -hmm. or you can go, man, I'm, I'm that leader. That's going to take us to the next, next spot, but nobody's given me an opportunity. No one's given me a chance. Right. And as a consultant, you need to say, how am I going to marry the two? Yes. How am, how am I going to help them say, you're great. I like where you're going with this. Let me help you be seen hotshot leader. Yeah. Cause you can, you can move so fast that no one wants to look at you. No yeah. one can see you, right? You, right. They don't know if you're going to be at the company next week, the way you're, the way you're moving. Yeah. But how can I help get you some solid wins and what that looks like? And likewise, for some of those leaders that are just very stable. Yeah. As a consultant, you say, okay, where do you want to be? Right. You know, let's, let's be real, right? You, you've already, have you reached the pinnacle? Mm -hmm. Because if you've reached the pinnacle and you don't have any more energy, hey, that's that's great, but don't put yourself in a position to to fall. Yeah, right? let's get you some still some solid wins, some stable deals. Let's let's yeah. probably get you with a company, right? That, that's just saying, hey, we need to be stable in this crazy economy. I need to make sure that I'm not losing shareholder value. Yes. So bring me one of those leaders that's that's right now just want to keep us going afloat. So I I, I think that's. I'm excited, you know, uh, for where we're going. Yeah. But I, I'll be honest with you, uh, Stacey. I'm also a little anxious. Yeah. Um, it's with it moving so fast that that not just keeping up is a challenge. It's not quite a challenge, but keeping up with where people want to be is is my challenge. Yeah. Because it's moving so fast that sometimes either people don't know where they want to go or how they're going to get there yeah. or what the next two years look like. And so I, I think it's important for us as, as, as leaders to, to, to stop and kind of say, Phew. yeah, just, just where are we and where are we going and how are we going to get there? Yeah. So I, I think, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited. And by the way, um, in, in the good news that you and I were talking about on, on your milestones and, w and where you're, where you're hitting, who's calling out to you, right? These industries, iHeartRadio, they're seeing change as well. Mm -hmm. right? They've been around. I, I remember when iHeartRadio was just coming out, you know, 
15, yeah. 20 years ago, which was great. I, I had the little app and was <laughs> was trying to search through the 50 at that time. Yeah. And, and what we were going to listen to. And now here we are, you know, they're reaching out saying, hey, we want you to be a part of that because change is there. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and they're looking for you to bring them to the next 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 level what, what do you think is on your radar for the next six months d- d- don't 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 go too deep because i don't i don't want to spoil it for for everyone but you know where do you see the next six months of, of change happening well i think in the next six months we were going to be working on what we where we are right now and what changes we can make to even make the company better and stronger and even make it a more profitable company and also what can we do to make our voice heard more to a larger audience so we can take the messages that we have for all these experts that are working with us and sharing their message how can we make their message more powerful more noticeable and how can we what services can we provide to them that will make them excel so not mm. just the company itself but the people who make the company the people who take the time to share their message what could we do to the, for them that will help them excel as well so it's kind of like a you know it's a give and take not just a take take and then use all this knowledge how can we take all this knowledge and bring it out to such a large population and, and make a, a huge impact in other people's lives as well. You know, that's phenomenal, right? I, obviously, as someone that's part of your your, your podcast group, <laughs> um, and and having these as, as we as we go further, you know, I am not rethinking, but you as a business owner, you, you need to take these moments to sit and say, okay, where where is my niche moving to? Right? Yeah. You start off here. And then you go here and then you go, okay, I got it. And yeah. then it could take two or three really good conversations with some industry leaders and go, okay, there. And, yeah. and I, th- I think I'm, I'm at this point now where I'm seeing that that change and transition is, mm-hmm. is where my focal is, is going to go. And then yeah. identifying and finding those that are in this turbulent state. Because right. again, for a leadership consultant, some people come to you and say, Hey, I'm just trying to stay where I am. I'm just trying to keep my head above water. Right. How can you help me? But I think uh, I'm, I'm really interested in reaching out to those that I have mentored. Um, and I'm, 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 I'm saying it as we're, as we're talking, it's, it's hitting me. Those that I've mentored that were in this, this really fertile infant stage some yeah. years ago, mm-hmm. um, they, they were great. I, I will, I was loved. At the time, I loved being that springboard for them. Yeah. And now I need to reach back because they are in almost a mid stage. Right. I, I, I got them in this little fertile and, and they reached out to me and say, man, because of you. And I said, great. And I'm watching them from afar. But now I think I want to step a little inside their world and yeah. say, okay, where are you? What are you seeing? What does it look like? I, I need to I need to add to to the clients that I do have that I'm talking to. I need I need to add that new piece because you were there with me five years ago, six years ago when when it was this. Right. What are you seeing? And then they had this fresh perspective. It was fresh at the time, but they were they were new, so they were kind of leaning on me. Yes. And I think I want to I want to marry. They are my looking glass, right? They, they yeah. are they are that mirror that I want to see. Yeah. You know when when they say who's the fairest of of the of them all, right? right? Uh, and I need to I need to look and say who's the fairest of them all and watch them and see where we're going. So I'm excited in the next six months because this this newer team of leaders, yeah, they're they're so they're they're seeing ideas that that I I, I won't think of. Yeah, you know, so so there's a difference in saying I can't think of something, right? And saying I won't think of it. Yeah, you know, you know, I I have years of experience and knowledge. I have years of team members that I've I've mentored. I I love where they're going, and I'm watching them. And some of them have these ideas that I go, man. Again, not that I couldn't, I would never think of that idea. Right. right? I I'm I'm not in that space. Right. I'm yeah. I'm enjoying beautiful Florida, mm-hmm. and they're coming up with ideas that you have to be in Minnesota yeah. 
right? <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> you, you, or you, you have to be out in, in Northwest. You have to be in Portland to have an idea that, that is so Portland, so Seattle that works, yeah. right? But I'm, I'm here enjoying Florida. So I need to reach out. So I, again, thank you for this particular time because having these moments with, again, professionals such as you gives me an opportunity to not just be excited, but to say, hey, I want to be on this journey with you in the next six months. Right. Well, thank you. You know, I, I think um, it's very important. And I think you know, even what you said, you know, I, I think when you are a consultant, when you are a coach, when you are a, when you are helping others and you are changing people's lives, it is important to go back and to have these and to and to see where they are and to see if you're able to even help them further because in in 6 months a year two years from now they're at a completely different stage they're thinking differently they're doing things differently and wouldn't it be nice to have that person that could actually know exactly where they're at and actually help them elevate now to the next level that they may not have been able to do, or maybe they won't be able to do as quick if they didn't have your guidance. So they right. could actually jump two steps, you know, up the ladder instead of just, you know, taking a whole year to try to get to the next level if they get to the next level. Exactly. Exactly. I, I like it. I'm in. I'm, in. <laughs> I'm there, you know. And, and, and by the way, just a, just a, not a shameless plug, but I was thinking about uh, last time we were talking and, and giving my, my website out and and, uh, you know, if, if you have sometimes if you have to spell your website name, so <laughs> if you have to spell it so delicately, you should probably change it somewhat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so I did, by the way. So so at the oh, end, yeah. when we talk, yeah, I, <laughs> I changed it to something that's a little more uh, convenient. I was on a I was on a networking call a couple of days ago and uh, the person I spoke with, you know, they 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 help people get certain places and. And uh, she says, hey, you know, when I bring up your name, um, you know, th you know, there's a, a professional football player <laughs> with your name. And I said, I said, yeah, he's he's family. She goes, really? I said, yep, I get it. I said, but typically, if you just say consultant at the end of my name, and she <laughs> goes, oh, there you are. OK, yeah, you're a lot of places. I go, there you go. So that, that <laughs> helped me. Oh, let me see. Right. It's. It's about it's about branding and what that looks like. And, yeah. and uh, you know, sometimes you can get so focused on where you're going, what you want to do, that you can lose sight of it. There's still some things you can do to help not just grow your business, but grow who you are and oh. get, get, get your opportunity to help out there. Yes, 100 percent, 100 percent. And there's you should always consistently be changing things up, always, always. And that's a problem. Some people keep things the way it is. And, you know, it's, it's, you need to refresh your, your materials, your content, your website, everything consists on a consistent basis. And uh, it makes a big difference. It makes a big difference. I'm going to, I'm going to, again, I'm, I'm, I'm staying, I'm not hanging on to your Kurt, to your coattails, but I'm, <laughs> I'm watching to, to, to get better. And I need to enlist a couple of, uh, a couple of the, the, the younger creative minds to help me help me get there you know my yeah. my my kids are there i have a couple of that's that's uh you know they reach out to me hey i can do <laughs> and again it's, it's not being so fearful but they're like hey hey Eric, i can i can do this and get you there and i'm like man this I, <laughs> you know i i at our age sometimes or at my age i still have these moments that i can hold on and, and go for this ride yeah and, and i i am i am excited so I think I think that's what I'm looking for next as well. I, I can't wait till next time we talk. Yes, I I think you're doing a great job. Now, if you had to take everything we talked about today and you wanted to summarize it and maybe put you know point out some things that you thought are very important for the listeners to understand, what are some things you'd like to emphasize on today? That's great. You know, I I think if I can sum up the the talk, what we're looking at is there is a way that we are that we were either taught from a time frame that was very instrumental to us. Mm -hmm. Between 15, 19, and 20 years old, we kind of watched some of the, the, the people around us that helped shape who we are, yeah. be who we are. And then as we grow, we, we either for, forget that or we don't look back on it. Yeah. We don't see that base of support. And those things have changed, 
right. you're not the same person. So uh, as a leader, you can grow up in an environment that you find yourself no longer being effective yes. right? because my leader was 40 years or 30 years older than me. And they came from a different world and those leadership traits aren't as effective. So that stability, I'm now not as agile as I used to be. Right. That command and control mindset that my, my parents or my, my mentors had kind of prohibits me from being a little more collaborative in today's environment, right? Right. Or taking all the education that I have, being as smart and, and knowing every little intricate detail of my industry. Mm -hmm. And then I lose the fact that today's time, I need to be more emotion emotionally intelligent yes. to what people around me are looking for. Those are the things that we need to do and be to yeah. prepare ourselves for what's next. Right. You know, you and I had a quick conversation. And I said, I'm really excited to what two years or maybe three years from now, the expectation of leaders is going to be. Yeah. So, you know, I, I got to keep my hand and finger on the pulse of today's uh, um, uh, leadership journey be because it, it will change, right? Yes. Those that were in the 20s and early 30s, they have a mind and a growth and a societal mindset that is completely different from mine. Oh, and it's going to shape what next shareholder values are going to look like. It, yes. it, it, it has to. And oh, we yeah. at these leaders, we have to kind of either adjust with it, get on the ride, learn and still support them and be that consultant that they need when they get there. Yes. And I think people have to be very open minded because I think, you know, I find a lot of people are. They, they still tend to do things the old fashioned way. And with time changing and so many things are evolving, it's time to really open your eyes and really take a look at what the successful leaders of today's society are doing and right. then compare it honestly to yourself and say, okay, what are they doing? And what am I not doing? You know, and then try to find that happy medium that represents you, but maybe looking at some of the tactics they're using and maybe trying to tweak your, your, the way you do things a little bit. And that helps, you know, that I think helps people grow also. Yeah. We, we, we have to stay. I, I, I say this in my book. I said, uh, you have to be on the balls of your feet. Yes. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes when you're, when you're flat footed, you, you're not going to make the adjustments when, when they come, right? Something right. Quick happens and then it's remarkable how your body is not even ready to, to, to turn or to yes. move. But yet when you're on the balls of your feet as a, some sort of sport where you, you know, you're, everything is tense, yes. your legs are ready, you're, you're ready to spring forward in action. And so we, as leaders in today's time, we, we got to get on the balls of our feet. We got to get ready. hundred percent. Now tell everybody about your book so they know about your book and where to find it. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so Highway to Skyway Leadership, right? We can go to my website, ericebronconsulting.com. <laughs> <laughs> you go there. I have some great things you can see. There's a podcast gallery. There's an author gallery. You click there, you'll see bestseller, and then you can you can find it. You know, um, when, when I came up with this, this was charting a course for excellence in the aerospace and automotive industries. And I came out of that space. And the reason why I point that out in particular is that you have to be agile, right? And it, yeah. it is, it, there's a ton of visibility on the news cycle for aerospace, aviation, and automotive at all times. And those particular leaders, if you can grow and then excel in that space, you can be a leader for any industry. And so that's why this gives some of the great pointers of how to grow and be and what's expected to be a leader in that aerospace space. I love it. I love it. Now, can they find that also on Amazon? You can actually find it on Amazon. So yes, you can uh, Highway to Skyway Leadership. Look that up. Look up my name, Eric E. Ebron. You'll see a couple of other books that I had there as well, but you can grab it. Uh, I Again, I think it's it's very instrumental for young leaders to mm -hmm. say, hey, how can I get a leg up one or two spaces in in, in leaders in that realm? Right. And this is what you're going to see. This is what you're going to grab. It covers, you know, um, I have four R's, but it covers uh, something that I call platitudes kill. So this mm -hmm. is something I haven't mentioned before. Many um, young leaders learn the lingo of, of leading. Yes. It sounds good. Uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. So we talk about out of the box thinking, which is great. 
uh, I used to I used to tell these leaders, um, I said, uh, I want some new ideas. And they would say, hey, Eric, this is a great out of the box. I go, wait, 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 wait. You've only been there a couple of years. You, you There's more of the box. Yeah. Don't don't give me an outside of the box. Give mm-hmm. me an inside of the box right. idea that we haven't done yet. Yes. And they would go, I never thought of it yet. I go, the box is there. You're, it's, it's, you're almost arrogant to think that you, you've thought of everything inside the box. Yeah, yeah. You're going to give me... There, there's more ideas in this box. And, and so I would say that to say, and one, one, one gentleman would always say, uh, he goes, I'm trying to be more holistic in my thinking. I go, give me an idea. And he goes, well, I'm trying to be, and I would go, stop, just give me an idea. And he goes, you know, so when we take the um, uh, the, the business end and we, we take these holistic views, and I go, stop, stop, stop. Stop giving me these platitudes that sounds good in a business boardroom meeting, but yeah. you're never giving me any concrete that's going to propel us. Yeah. So again, there's a chapter about getting out of this this lingo that we we throw that doesn't have meat right. as a leader, right? Mm-hmm. If you're not bringing a successful meaty idea that's going to propel your team, then stop it. Other right. than that, you just sound good, but you're not going to your, your team is going to see right through it. So right. it talks about that as well. It, it gives young leaders this great opportunity to say this is what I can do and sound like and be effective as a leader. And that's what I'm looking for. I love it. I love it. Now tell everybody about the services that you provide. Excellent. So for me, I'm, I'm really good at helping people identify where you are uh, in the realm of what's needed as a leader today. So mm-hmm. uh, I actually have this, 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 uh, this survey I kind of get out. Uh, it's 15 to 30 questions and it helps identify them whether they're a little more collaborative, whether they're more authoritarian, whether they're more command and control. And it helps give them this base to where we're going to start from. Because sometimes right. a leader doesn't know where they start. Yeah. So I have that service that they can do, fill out this survey, we analyze it. And then we have this talk about where you are as a leader. Yeah. Then we start to say, where do you want to be? Meaning, who do you idolize? Right. right? Who are some of your best leaders at your company you're at? Who yeah. are some of the worst leaders at your company you're at? To, right. to give you that scale for them. Yeah. Uh, I do private one-on-ones, which I think are very effective. We have these monthly meetings. We can talk about where you stand month to month. Uh, I believe in giving at least three pointers mm-hmm. and say, here's what I think these three things are going to get you to the next level in the next 60 days. Right. And then we stick with that because I've given pointers that one of them is very challenging. One of the points is something that they they, they can't do. And then that helps open up why you can't do that. Not as a therapist, but just as a leadership consultant Yeah. To say you have a difficult time engaging one-on-one with your people. Right. Or you have a difficult time actually being authentic, being your authentic self. I've had leaders who time and time again, on a quarterly basis, we go over authenticity yeah. because they, they're, they're, they're not so true. So when we talk about the imposter syndrome, yeah. they're not so true with, with who they are. Uh, I've had leaders who uh, don't like to lead. Yeah. That's, you know, they, they were either thrust in that position or they felt that was the next step for them. Yes. Um, and then they find out that they're, they're terrible at it. So now the majority of their day or week, they feel this pressure and stress and anxiety of being something that they're not. Right. Uh, and so we we have those conversations that as a leadership consultant, I, I'm not afraid to say, hey, you're, you're, in, you're in the wrong wrong field, right? right? You should not be a people leader, right? You should be a manager or you should be a leader in certain, you know, realms of uh, responsibility, maybe a $50 million program, right? right. Mm-hmm. But definitely having people is not, is not your thing. It's going, you're going to take too much work out of you to be something you're not. So I have that service as well. We have that. And then I have a group where we get together and, and just kind of talk these moments on a month to month basis and say, what, what didn't work? For you yeah. as a leader and right. then it's, it's groups are typically about five or seven what didn't work as a leader what did work and then these industry people can kind of hear about this i love it i love it this has been amazing i am so glad you came on the show to talk about this i think it's so important and i think you know it helps people realize that time is changing people are changing and our leadership tactics have to change too and you know and if we can incorporate you know what's working 
and incorporate the change of personalities and people and the industries and understand how we can take all that information and create a strategy of in leadership that will work and benefit not only the company, but will benefit the employees, will benefit the department and wh whoever they're working with, consumers, clients, products, new people, you know, whatever, yes. it will all pan out for the positive. And those 12% increases in profit will come, you know, because you just have, you need the right leadership, the right tactics, the right way of doing things, the right way of saying things. And, you know, and that all comes with, you know, looking at the past, looking at the present, looking into the future and looking how, what is changing and how can I incorporate that into our company and how can I be a good leader and, and really be honest with ourselves too. I say honest, key, you know, honesty is key and really yes. think about where you might be lacking and what changes you might have to incorporate, you know, in your own self, you know, because I think that's the hardest thing is people looking at their own self and, and realizing that, you know what, I might not be so good at this or that, and I might need a little help in that area. You know, we all, we all know this change is inevitable. Yes. So, so what part of, what side are you going to be on? Yes. Are you going to be a side that's left behind or that's moving forward with it? Or you kind of leader that leads change. Yes. Yeah. Those are, those are the real good ones. You and I talked about that as well. Those yeah. are the ones that are, you're so far ahead. People don't even know what, what, what you're doing. They can't yeah. figure it out. Right. <laughs> which, which is, which is a good thing, but, but a good, a good consultant can help either get you there, or help you see where you are in that mix. Right. Exactly. Well, this has been amazing. Thank you so much, Eric, for coming on the show today. I look forward to our next conversation and you truly are an amazing leader. And I really admire everything you've done in your, in your whole career. You've, you've come a long way and you've done a lot in many areas and I commend you. I, I really do. I I'm very proud to have you as one of our speakers on the show. Thank you, Stacy. Again, I, I'm, I'm watching you as one of the ones that are breaking ground for for many people such as myself to to get to so you keep going because we're we're watching we're, we're climbing <laughs> right there's going to be a time that you know I, i'm going to say wow I, I wouldn't be here without without stacy so thank you very much oh thank you and you have a great day great. you too bye-bye bye-bye